So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Teresa Mráčková and I'm going to open a blog about microRNAs. I will take you into the world of these small molecules and I hope uh, you will find out what possibilities are covered under microRNA brand. As the introduction, a little piece of biological background. In this picture, you can see a central dogma of molecular biology, showing the basis of whole function of living organisms. Uh, it tells that genetic information stored in DNA is translated through RNA into proteins. For a long time, proteins have been considered as only products of coding genes. If you imagine that this circle is uh, whole genetic information in the cell, it means 100% of genes. Can you guess which part is actively transcribed in, translated into proteins? Can you guess? The biggest part, or this smaller, or the smallest? Try to guess the color. Yes, it's for chocolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry? 92%. 92%, yeah, maybe it looks like this, but uh, it's surprising that it's only the smallest part. Only 2% of whole genome are protein-coding protein genes. Uh, so it means that, uh, yeah, David, <laughs> don't forget for sweets. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will continue. So uh, imagine that only 2% of our genetic information are protein-coding genes. So all proteins forming our body are coming from only 2% of our genetic information. But what means the rest? It was still a little mystery what means the rest. Is it possible that such a majority is just the annual gene? Trash. It was discovered that about 90% of genetic information is translated, uh, is transcribed into, or uh, sorry, it's uh, coding RNA molecules which don't serve for uh, protein translation. But uh, their uh, function was uh, still unclear until year 1993, where uh, when first non-coding RNA was described, including its function. It was in Senorabditis elegans, and the molecule was called microRNA LIN4 and has a regulatory function. The principle of uh, this regulation was described five years later, in 1998, by Fire and Mello, and was called RNA interference. And very soon, uh, it was clear that it was a revolutionary discovery awarded by Nobel Prize in 2006. And you can see that after 2006, they are much more happier. <laughs> So, some basic information about microRNAs as the most explored ones uh, from non-coding RNAs. They are very short, uh, their length is just about 12, to, uh, sorry, 20 nucleotides. Uh, they are also uh, show, um, they are single-stranded, they are non-coding, as I said. It means they are not translated into proteins. And their main role is post-transcriptional regulation of genes expression. It means that microRNA molecule can affect if another gene will be translated into protein or not. By this mechanism, they have an essential impact on our physiological conditions in our body, uh, from cell differentiation, metabolism, apoptosis, uh, regeneration, to many pathological mechanisms. Now, I show you a short video which gives you an overview of this biological background. Uh, it is not important to remember any names of uh, in included proteins or complexes, but it is good to know the basic principle of microRNA function. Similar to proteins, the genes coding for microRNAs are contained in the nucleus in the DNA. Each gene is transcribed by RNA polymerase II which produces either a regulatory or a messenger RNA. In this case, the transcript is a primary microRNA which forms a typical hairpin loop structure. It will become the final microRNA with regulatory function after several steps of processing. First, the double-stranded stem is recognized by the protein DGCR8. An enzyme called Drosha associates with DGCR8 to form a microprocessor complex, which is able to cut the RNA into a smaller precursor microRNA. 
It can now be exported into the cytoplasm, where it will inactivate the messenger RNA of one or multiple genes. The precursor microRNA is carried out of the nucleus through a nuclear pore by the transporter molecule X14-5. In the cytoplasm, it is recognized by a large RNA's protein called DICER. DICER cleaves the stem loop and forms a short double-stranded microRNA molecule. In the next step, an argonaut protein AGO2 interacts with DICER to bind the microRNA. The microRNA is unwound and one strand is released. The remaining strand, called the guide strand, interacts with AGO2 and some additional proteins to form the RISC, the RNA-induced silencing complex. It can now be guided to its target and inactivate one or multiple genes. The messenger RNA of a target gene is complementary to the sequence of the microRNA. That enables base pairing. Once bound, there are two ways in which RISC can inactivate the mRNA. Proteins in the complex can simply cut the messenger RNA, which will be further destroyed by the cell. Inhibition of translation is another mechanism. In this case, the RISC complex prevents the ribosome subunit from binding. In both cases, the messenger RNA will not be translated into a protein, and the gene is silenced. MicroRNA looks like and what they do. It is not surprising that people already discovered their immense potential in biological sciences. Uh, in past decade, there is a huge boom in uh, microRNA research. Uh, more than 76,000 articles have been published about microRNAs. Uh, Levels of microRNAs are closely linked to normal function of our body. Any imbalance in uh, microRNA regulation can lead to changes of physiological conditions or can reflect abnormal stage of uh, the organism. So they could be uh, an ideal biomarkers for monitoring of several major areas of human disease. Uh, why the potential of this of uh, new biomarkers is so strong? It's because of several characteristics of microRNA molecules. Firstly, it is estimated that more than 60% of uh, genes are under microRNA regulation. Moreover, one microRNA can affect more genes and those physiological processes, and one process can be affected by any number of microRNAs. So there is a dense network between a uh, relationship of biological processes and microRNAs. Also, their great stability meets the requirements of good biomarker. It's mainly because they appear in complexes with several molecules which protect them. And last but not least, uh, there are groups of microRNAs that seem to be tissue-specific or disease-specific and are released into circulation and are detectable in many sample types. Uh, to that point, uh, except tissues, which was the first matrix when, uh, where microRNAs were detected, in 2008 another revolution was discovered, microRNAs in circulation. Uh, that fact that microRNAs are released into circulation and are detectable in many body fluids leads to uh, increase of their potential as biomarkers because it opens door into non-invasive clinical utilization. Uh, potential of microRNA biomarkers cover several parts of medical care. Is it possible to use them for diagnostics and for both, for yes or no diagnostics or for differential diagnostics? Also for disease staging and severity, for prognosis evaluation, for uh, therapy response monitoring or for patient's outcome prediction. Also nowadays, very uh, increasing possibility of using microRNAs as therapeutics. Uh, besides, uh, that, ma uh, that majority of microRNA applications are still in research and development stage, the way to clinical application is uh, surely open, because first signs of clinical utilization are already appearing in validations or even in utilization. As an example, I can name a test for thyroid gland cancer, uh, Tiramir, which is used together with Tigen X test, which determines eight, on eight oncomarkers, uh, plus Tiramir determines uh, 10 microRNAs. As a second example, a screening test uh, of Merckx's company for gastric cancer, which is based on detection of 12 microRNAs. 
So uh, you can see that microRNA biomarkers always forms a groups which together have a clinical impact. We call them microRNA biomarker panels. And BioEndor doesn't stay behind and actively develops methods for microRNA detection and looking for new biomarker panels. Uh, we cooperate with several excellent, excellent workplaces on translation of research into products. As an example, I can uh, show you our hot topics, microRNA and stroke, colorectal cancer, myocardial infarction, metabolic syndrome or uh, monitoring of cancer hemoresistance. As microRNAs are very promising, there are of course some challenges in their detection and utilization. Um, their, their land is very short. Secondly, uh, many microRNAs are very similar in sequence and also they, their concentration in some uh, kind of body fluids are not very high. So, uh, classic and uh, established uh, conventional detection methods uh, using in uh, classic RNA research are not uh, sufficient enough and there must be some special solution. And we can offer this special complete solution for microRNA detection. You will hear about our technologies and services more closer from my colleagues later, but I would like to sum up all possibilities in few points. So, for microRNA detection exist several methods, from which RTQPCR is still the most widely used one. In this area, we have a uh, very good experience with Mirxes technology. We use it in our development and for, and for customers, we are able to offer custom analytical service. Uh, secondly, in our own technology, uh, based on immunoassay for absolute quantification of microRNAs, we can offer kits for sale, also custom analytical service and on-demand development. Our complete solution fulfills isolation kits for RNA isolation. So that was just a basic overview. And finally, to my last uh, question, who can be our customers? Basically, anybody who want to add microRNA into their research. For example, universities and uh, academic teams. According to our experience, now dramatically rises a number of teams who want to add microRNA analysis into their grant applications and long-term projects. So there is hidden a great potential. We would, we would like to point also to uh, medical, uh, also to laboratories and clinical workplaces uh, which have uh, research activities and intentions to test novel biomarkers except classic proteins or metabolites to uh, medical workplaces and clinicians with research activities and for example also to pharma companies which can, uh, which can um, monitor the development by using microRNA biomarkers and can innovate their procedures. So that's the last point of my presentation. I really thank you for your attention and if there are, so, if there are some questions you can ask now or later during this session. Thank you very much again.